Uh, welcome back for the international news stage here at CES 2015. Um, over the last couple of days, we've talked about TV technology. Uh, yesterday, our colleagues from staff were talking about wearable tech and what's been happening there. Uh, today, we thought we'd talk a little bit more about what's happening in the hi-fi and home cinema world. And I've got with me my colleague, Seth Ewan, from What Hi-Fi. Um, said one of the first things that we've seen here um, is Dolby Atmos. There was a lot of talk about that before we came out from the UK, and now there are a lot of companies who are obviously demonstrating that here at the show. Can you just sort of tell us a little bit about it? Because you actually tested it, haven't you? You've experienced yeah. it yourself. Well, Dolby Atmos um, started off in, uh, as a cinema technology where they'd have um, up to 64 speakers all around behind the, t the screen and, and above the audience. And um, now it's starting to make its way into the home with um, a range of uh, home Atmos speakers and, uh, and surround amplifiers. But presumably you're not expected to put 64 speakers in your living room. <laughs> no, no, that's, uh, that's not practical. So what they're doing is they're enabling people to bounce sound off their ceiling by pointing speakers upwards or um, specific Atmos speakers that have upwards firing drivers. Oh, okay, so you have a sort of drive unit in the, in the top of the cabinet of the speaker and yeah. that sort of so you've got the, um, to the ceiling. The main unit that fires towards the audience and yeah. then you've got an upwards firing bit that shoots up and then down towards the audience, creating the illusion that sounds coming from, from above. Oh, okay. Now, th that's obviously one way of doing it. You can also, I understand, have in-ceiling speakers as well. I mean, obviously, that's not practical for a lot of people, but you could have that option if you, you were... You could do, and um, some people would say that's ideal because um, it, it also depends on what kind of ceiling you have, yeah. how high it is, and um, it, it's the processing and the amplifiers that decides where the sound's coming from. But um, if you have a source that's actually directly above you, it's easier to control than than bouncing sounds off walls. Right. Now, you've actually sort of tested and listened to a full Dolby Atmos system in our, in our test rooms back in London. What, what was it like? What did you think of it? It's very impressive. Um, it often feels as though you don't have a ceiling because the sound genuinely comes from above. You've got that sense of scale that um, you just don't get with a normal 5.1 or, or 7.2 uh, setup. So, so it, is, it is very effective and it does work. But the only problem at the moment is um, we don't really have the software to, to properly use uh -huh. it. Yeah. There's been about three Blu-rays out there that, that has officially got Atmos on it. Um, very few studios have signed up to, to distributing Blu-rays that have Atmos. So at the moment, it's I think Lionsgate mm. and uh, Paramount have committed to Atmos. But so far this year, there's been n no... Uh, no, nothing in the, in the way of releases. But presumably, I mean, you know, hopefully there will be more discs coming. Eventually, you know, you know, we're, 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 we're assuming the Hollywood studios will sort of get it together and eventually more discs will come through. Well, it, it wouldn't take much effort for the studios to, uh, to put this out because it's, it's not something that they need to, to do on top of uh, a film. Uh, mm. Most films these days um, have the capability to be shot and mixed in Atmos at the studios. Um, so what they need to do is, is to just put that out yeah, okay. And uh, we've also seen, obviously, a lot of the manufacturers making home cinema amps and receivers bringing out Dolby Atmos-enabled models. So we'll be presumably be testing a lot more of those in the coming year. Yes, we've, we've done about four so far, yeah. and uh, they are coming. Yeah, okay. Well, moving on from um, home cinema, one of the other big trends, of course, here uh, at CES is uh, streaming, and particularly there's a lot of... A buzz and talk about high resolution audio and high resolution streaming. Now, we've had services uh, back in the UK launched from uh, the likes of Kobus in France and Tidal, which is CD quality streaming, so better than you know what we had from, say, Spotify in the past. So it's now CD quality, 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. But there's a, there's a lot of talk about uh, future developments or coming developments which will allow streaming of high, uh, higher quality, high definition audio. So just explain a little bit of what's going on there. Well, high-res audio has been at the fringes of, of kind of becoming mainstream for a while now, and this year it, it might actually properly take off because we've got these manufacturers that are enabling people to, um, to, to stream this around the home as well as uh, on portable devices. Mm. Um, and this year we've, we've seen quite a few um, uh, net network home streaming devices that are, are designed to be kind of desktop devices or, or used around the home. 
and not, not simply in, um, in portable form, form factors. Right. Now, one of, one of the problems up until now has been that, um, obviously, if you were going to try and stream high-resolution audio, it would take up an awful lot of uh, bandwidth because it was also you know, very sort of data-hungry. But there were a number of developments going on out there to sort of try and overcome that problem, one of them being um, MQA, uh, Master Quality Authenticated from Meridian. Um, that, as I understand it, what that means is it doesn't take up so much data. To, and it's a more efficient way of packing the high-resolution files, so it's easier to stream them. Yep, that seems to be um, the only option at the moment to, uh, to stream high-res audio, because it's a lot of information. And if you're going to, to squeeze that over uh, an internet connection, you're going to need a lot of processing. But what MQA seems to do is it, it, it handles it in such a way that the, um, the algorithm doesn't sacrifice much in quality. Mm. So you could have full-on high-quality FLAC high-res audio files that work with a standard internet connection. Yeah, so streaming of high-res audio is now something that is going to become reality. It's, it's beginning to happen. It's going to happen this year. OK, well, we've actually got Bob Stewart from uh, Meridian on the stage later this afternoon. So uh, you can check back on whatHiFi.com uh, to see that interview. Uh, finally, we have uh, been talking to a lot of companies here who um, are starting to uh, collaborate on projects, which is quite interesting. Um, I was over at the uh, Gibson stand by the Las Vegas Convention Center yesterday. And uh, Gibson, who obviously are known for their guitars, uh, are now um, buying up an awful lot of well-known sort of audio and hi-fi brands. So I think they've, they've bought TIAC and Onkyo. Uh, and also now Philips or Whoops Innovations. Um, one of the interesting things there is that you see a lot of people uh, collaborating more on products in a way that they haven't done before. Um, have, you, have you been over to the stand? Have you seen that? Well, I think the, the thing with, with uh, any new trend of technology is, is that everyone initially tries to uh, have this mad rush to, to define it, but it's impossible to, to come up with an industry standard without collaborating. So, um, I mean, with, with uh, TV Tech this year, we, we saw um, a few manufacturers come together to define what, what the industry thinks is 4K. Mm -hmm. And so with audio, now they're coming together to, to define what high-res audio is and to come up with a, a standard of, of making sure what you see is, is what you're getting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I was interested because, I mean, talking to some of the acoustic engineers from Philips, for example, um, they're now collaborating uh, with Gibson. So Gibson de are developing their own range of headphones, uh, which will be sort of branded Gibson and, and styled uh, very uh, distinctively to sort of mirror the design of their guitars in some ways in terms of the colors and the materials they use, but with the acoustic engineering done by Philips. And one of the other th things the Philips engineers were doing was certain projects they've been sort of working on in the past that perhaps Philips hadn't decided to push out. They're working with Onkyo and their other manufacturers within the Gibson family, as it were, um, to develop those products under a different brand. So it's, it's quite interesting how that sort of collaboration is, is starting to take off. OK, well, that's it for now um, for uh, the CES 2015. Um, please come back to whatHiFi.com later, where we will have more interviews here on the international news stage. Thank you. Mm -hmm.